Hello and welcome back to Ebenezer. We have a great show in store for you. Coming up, we have a Bible story where Jesus has some choice words for the Pharisees. And we make a craft where we make forgiveness hearts. But before we get into any of that, it's time for a song. And it's called The Love Medley by John Hardwick. Do sing along. What a great song! Now it's time for our Bible story, where Jesus has some choice words for the Pharisees. When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him, so he went in and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees clean the outside of the bowl, but on the inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside also make the inside? But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint and all other kinds of herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. 
Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogue and respectful greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, because you are like unmarked graves, which people walk over without knowing it. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. But Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your ancestors who killed them. So you testify that you approve what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build the tombs. Because of this, God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they kill, and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. Woe to you, experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who are entering. When Jesus went outside, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him in something he might say. Well, what a great Bible story. Now we're going to see if we can figure out what it means for us. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. Why does Jesus talk about cleaning? Well, everything kicks off in our passage because Jesus doesn't wash before the meal and the Pharisees are very upset about this. But Jesus explains that the Pharisees are being hypocrites. Although they care so much about washing their bodies and washing their outsides, they don't care about what's on their inside. They don't keep their hearts clean. In fact, Jesus says that they're full of wickedness and greed, and they're really sinful and dirty. But Jesus gives a solution. He just doesn't just tell them a problem. He says that if they want to make themselves clean on the inside, they need to be generous to the poor. Isn't that amazing? That being kind and generous to the poor helps clean our hearts. Aren't the Pharisees loving God if they give a tenth of their stuff to him? Well, we'd think someone who gives a tenth of their possessions to God would really love God and be doing a good thing. But Jesus is saying that it's not enough to just give possessions or money away, and especially when that money, you might not feel it if it's only a tenth and you have a lot of money. Instead, Jesus is saying that in addition to that, you should love God and do justly and love the people around you. And the Pharisees weren't very good at that at all. Instead, they were searching for power and importance and trying to make themselves look good in life. But Jesus is saying that instead they should be serving the poor and humbling themselves and looking for justice in the world. Why are the Pharisees being held responsible for people their ancestors killed? It seems strange, doesn't it? These Pharisees that Jesus is talking to weren't even alive at the time that their ancestors were killed. And you can imagine their reaction, being like, oh no, don't group us with them, we wouldn't have done that. But it's important to remember that we all do wrong things and make big mistakes. And although we might think we might have acted differently in the past, we can't know. And these Pharisees are the same people that go on to kill Jesus. So we can see that they do do a, a very big thing wrong. How did the experts in the law take away the key to knowledge? Well, the experts in the law knew a lot about the scriptures and about what God wanted in them. But they made it seem like no one else could understand it, and only they could. They made it difficult. They gave uh, a heavier load to those around them so that they couldn't understand, and made it harder for them to know what God wanted. Um, and they themselves didn't follow it properly either. So Jesus is saying that they're really at fault here for not letting people come closer to God and hear his word and understand what it means. What does this mean for our lives? Well, a, a really great part of this passage that we can focus on is Jesus telling us to be clean on the inside and not to be hypocrites. And he tells us that the way to do this is to love the people around us and to act justly. 
um, and especially to look after the poor. And there's many ways in our lives that we could look to help out the poor. We could donate money to charity, even if it's only a, a portion of our pocket money, or uh, we could advocate, which means to argue for groups that help out poor communities. But it's also to remember about justice, that there are lots of people in this world who are unfairly treated, groups who are oppressed or persecuted. And it's great to look into charities that help out those groups, and to see if we can do our part to make the world a more just and fair place. What are we going to learn about next time? Next time, Jesus tells us just how much we're worth. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse comes from Luke, chapter 11, verse 41, and it says this. But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. So let's say that again. But now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. Now it's time for the craft. Today, we're making forgiveness hearts. For today's craft, you will need a kitchen sponge, some scissors, remember to be careful with scissors, and finally, whiteboard pens. Now it's time for the craft. Firstly, take your kitchen sponge and cut it out so that it's a bit flatter and the scourer part is removed. Then cut your sponge into a heart shape, like I'm doing here. This can be quite tricky and scissors can be sharp, so remember to be careful and ask an adult for help if you need. This sponge heart will represent our hearts. Now take your whiteboard marker and let's make this really dirty and coloured in. Let's cover it in lots of marker pen squiggles to represent all the bad things that can make our hearts unclean. Just like how Jesus told the Pharisees that they had greed and wickedness on the inside. But now let's put our hearts in the soapy water. See how often a bit of washing and all the dirt goes away and our heart is back to being clean. This is what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. He made us all clean on the inside by dying for everything that we'd done wrong. Well, what a great craft. Do send through any questions you have or any pictures of your crafts to the email in the description below. But for now, it's time for another song. And it's called Donkey Riding by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. seen a king on parade with all his bling he thinks he's the greatest thing but he don't ride no donkey look who comes through the streets donkey riding donkey riding jesus christ the king of kings riding on a donkey Ever seen a movie star and wondered how you get that far and get to drive the fastest car? But they don't ride no donkey. Look who comes through the streets, donkey riding, donkey riding. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, riding on a donkey. Let's be like the king of kings who laid aside everything Let's be humble just like him riding on a donkey Look who comes through the streets Donkey riding, donkey riding Jesus Christ the king of kings riding on a donkey Look who comes through the streets Donkey riding, donkey riding Jesus Christ the king of kings riding on a donkey Well, we're running out of time now, so we're going to end in a short prayer. If you'd like to make it yours, please join in with the Amen at the end. Lord, thank you that you have a heart for all your people. Thank you that you want us to look out for the poor. Help us to be generous, doing what we can to lift those out of poverty and out of situations where they are oppressed. Help us to always seek to make your justice happen. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all we have time for. 
Do tune in next time when Jesus tells us about how much we're worth. But for now, that's bye from me, and it's bye from Zelda. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.